All right, your extra practice for, um, this is technically video 2.5, extra notes, extra practice, um, is really something that is required because it's something that we're gonna do a lot. You're gonna need to be very comfortable with rearranging equations, but nine times out of 10 in algebra, we always do it for y, we always solve it for y. So instead of all of the crazy rearranging that we did in 2.5, like with these random variables, almost all the time you're gonna do it for algebra, it will be rearranging it for just y. We just wanna get y by itself. So this extra practice should take you through rearranging for y, um, like I said, which is what we're gonna mostly all the time be doing. So first thing you wanna do is distribute to negative two times x is just negative two x. Negative two times three y is negative six y, so it looks like minus six y. Okay, remember the goal is to get y by itself. So you want to slowly over time move everything else away. First thing we want to move away is the negative 2x. So let's add 2x to the other side. Cancel, cancel. It leaves negative 6y by itself, so we're getting closer to having y by itself. Here's something I want everyone to start doing. I know that you probably are not putting 20x, I hope, because that is not a like term. One has an x and one does not. So don't put 20x. But a lot of you have just gone ahead and written it separately like 18 plus 2x. And that is fine. That is the exact same answer I'm going to write. But I want you to start putting the um, coefficient that has the variable first, like write it first. Um, I know it may seem weird to do that because it actually doesn't matter if 18 comes first or if 2x comes first. But I promise later when we're in the next module, you will be like, oh, now I know why we always put 2x first. So if you're, if you're separating these out, put the one with the variable coming first. Okay, all right, just get in that habit. It's just, I know it doesn't matter, but it will later, I promise. So last step to getting y by itself is you want to divide by this negative six. So you're gonna divide by negative six on both sides. When you divide by negative six with a grouped set, you end up having to divide both this and this by the negative six. Over here, they just cancel out. I forgot to cancel them. So we're basically done, y equals, but you need to actually divide this out. Um, if, you, if you kind of turn your paper and look at the fraction that is already there, it's two sixths, well, two over negative six. So actually, if you can think of what two six simplifies to in your head, you could go ahead and just simplify it. So they both divide evenly by two, which would be one third. So I'm just going to look at it like that and say this is negative because it's positive by by negative. So negative one third x, don't forget your x. And then 18 divides evenly by negative six. 18 divided by negative six is negative three. Okay, the, I want really quickly, if you guys are like, I would have never come up with one third. How did she just look at that and know that it was one third? If you put in your calculator two divided by negative six, that's fine. Two divided by negative six. But what it is is a weird repeating decimal. And you're going to be like, I don't know. Do I round it? Do I? Anytime you get a weird decimal, I would rather you leave it the fraction it already is. So don't put a weird decimal. Just leave it 2 over negative 6, but you guys should know that 2 over negative 6 simplifies, and it simplifies to negative 1 third. Okay, you'll get better at this. It's okay if you didn't get that on the very first one, but that's the um, most simplified answer. Okay, number 2. Remember, we're getting y by itself. In this particular case, I love it because y is almost already by itself. The only thing we have to do to get y completely by itself is divide by 10. So divide both sides by 10 and y will be completely by itself. Remember, you have to divide this side and this side by 10. Okay, let's see if you guys could have figured this one out. Look at the fraction it already is. 5 tenths x. 5 over 10, 5 out of 10 is half. So I'm just gonna call it half x, and then 10 divided by 10 is one, positive one. So I'm gonna put plus one. Okay, y is already by itself, so it's done. Number three, we've got a lot going on here. If we want to solve for y, there's a y on each side. So we are going to have to combine 
like terms by moving one of the y's to join the other side. So it really doesn't matter. I always try to avoid negatives. So I think I'm going to subtract the 2y to move it over here to join this y. Um, if that's not the way you did it, you will still get the same answer I did. It'll just be different steps to get there. 5y minus 2y is 3y. Bring down your plus 8. Bring down your negative 3x plus 5. Okay, remember, the goal is to get y by itself, so we're going to move everything away from it. So the first thing you're going to move away from it is the plus 8. So I'm going to do minus 8 on both sides. All right, 3y, we're getting, we're getting closer. y is almost by itself. Bring down your negative 3x. 5 minus 8 is negative 3, so it's going to look like minus 3. And the very last step to getting y completely by itself is dividing by 3. Remember, when you're dividing by 3 on something over here that's adding or subtracting, you have to divide both sides, both parts, by the 3. Okay, so y equals negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1, and then x. So you can just make your 1 invisible if you want. That's more simplified. If you put a 1 there, that's okay too. And then negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. You have to have the 1 here. The only option that you have to making it invisible is if it's in front of a variable. But if it's by itself, you have to have it. Okay. Um, at any given time, if you want to try one of these on your own, push pause and go ahead and try it on your own. Um, and, but please be sure you check back and make sure you did it correctly because it's no, no use doing it by yourself if you're getting them wrong. All right, y is almost by itself, so I love this one. All we got to do is divide by 3. Divide both sides by 3. So y equals this part divided by 3 and this part divided by 3. So 15 divided by 3 is 5, so 5x. Don't forget your x. And then negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4, so it's going to look like minus 4. Cool. Number five, we only have one y. We got to move everything away from it. So we have a few things to be moving. So I'm going to just move one thing at a time. I'm going to move the x first by subtracting it. And remember, if you're not sure how many x's are there, if it just says x, that is one. So if it helps you to squeeze in the hidden invisible one and make it um, visible so you can see how many we're subtracting, that might help. So they cancel out over here, leaving us with 5y minus 10 equals whatever 2x minus 1x is. That is 1x, so I'll just leave it x. And then we're almost done. y has got some stuff going on, so we're going to get rid of the minus 10 next. We're going to move it to the other side by adding it. So now you've got 5y equals, um, these are not like terms, do not combine them but I'm going to put my variable x first and then plus 10. And last step, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. It's going to get a little tricky over here, but we can do this. Okay, remember I said if there's nothing in front of the x, then it is a hidden invisible 1. I would fill it in in this particular situation because it's going to help you when you turn it and look for what fraction it is. So y equals... Look at what fraction is there. That is 1 over 5, 1 fifth. You don't need to divide it in your calculator because you're going to get a decimal. 1 fifth is already a fraction, so just leave it 1 fifth. But don't forget your x. x can just be squished up against it. So 1 fifth x, 10 divided by 5 is 2, positive 2, so plus 2. Okay, solving for y we're going to move everything away from y. So let's start by subtracting this positive 8x. So get rid of it by subtracting it since it was positive. OK, here's a little test. I said this earlier in the video. Let's see if you paid attention. I brought down my negative 4y. Since these are not like terms, you're not going to combine them. But which one are you going to write first? Get in a habit of writing your variable with the x first. So negative 8x and then minus 4. Again, I know right now it doesn't matter, so you're like, why am I doing this? It will pay off. Last step, y is almost by itself. Divide both sides by negative 4. Cancel, cancel. 
negative 8x divided by negative 4. Negative divided by negative is positive 2x. And negative 4 divided by negative 4. Negative divided by negative is positive again, so plus 1. All right. You can probably do a few of these by yourself now, but I'm just going to keep working it through so you can just have extra, extra practice. To get y by itself, let's get rid of the 9x first. So subtract 9x. All right, bring down your 3y. Bring down the negative 9x first. Negative 9x, and that is a positive 3. So when I write it, I want to put it as plus 3. Remember, they can't be combined. They're not like terms. Last step, divide both sides by 3. When you divide this part by 3, you have to divide them individually. So negative 9x divided by 3. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3x. Don't forget your x. And then 3 divided by 3 is 1. It's positive 1, so plus 1. Also, if I'm going too fast, rewind it. Watch it again. Okay, we have distribution here, so you're going to have to distribute first. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times y is positive 5y. Over here, I'm just going to bring everything down. All right, if we're trying to get y by itself, we've got to move all this other stuff away from it. So I'm going to minus 5x first, and I kind of hate doing that because it's going to give me a negative over here, but I have no choice because when I'm solving for y, I'm moving everything away from y. So I've got 5y equals 20. 3x minus 5x is negative 2x. Um, I should have had that go first because I just got done telling you guys. In fact, you know what? I'm going to rewrite it. <laughs> you do not have to do this, but that is a negative 2x and a positive 20. So I'm just rearranging them because, again, I want you to get in the habit of putting your variable x coming first and then the constant last. It has the least amount of priority. Okay, y is almost by itself. It's being multiplied by 5. I'm going to divide both sides by 5. When you divide over here by 5, you're going to see a... Uh, you're going to put it in your calculator and you're going to get a decimal and you're going to go, oh shoot, Mrs. Garrison does not like decimals. So I'm going to leave it the fraction it already is. I'm going to take some work off of your plate and look at it and leave it. Negative 2 fifths. Negative 2 fifths x. 20 divided by 5 is 4 plus 4. Okay, if you didn't rearrange those, by the way, you would have got y equals 4 minus 2 fifths x. That's the same answer. I just want you to get in the habit of putting the x first. Okay, um, here we go. To get y by itself, we got to get rid of this. So let's add 21 to the other side. Cancel, cancel, bring down your 3y. Luckily for us, it's already in the correct order. They're not like terms, don't combine them. We're just having our 12x brought down and our plus 21 brought down. All right, last step, divide both sides by 3. y is by itself. 12x divided by 3 is 4x. And 21 divided by 3 is positive 7, so plus 7. I hope these are getting a little easier for you. Number 10, we want y by itself move away this stuff. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. Cancels over here. Bring down 3y. I want you to get in the habit of putting your x coming first. So that's a negative 2x and that's a positive 3. If you didn't, it's okay for now. Just if you can do. Okay, y is being divide, multiplied by 3 so I'm going to divide both sides by 3. This should be starting, hopefully, to get a little easier. It's already a fraction. Save yourself some time. Just write it how it is. Negative 2 over 3x. Negative 2 thirds x. 3 divided by 3 is 1. So plus 1. It's positive 1. All right, second to last one. We've got this. 
to get y by itself, move everything away. So I'm going to start by, this is a positive x, so I'm going to subtract it. Cancel, cancel, bring down your negative 2y. Don't forget that negative goes with it. On the right, I'm going to put the negative x first, and then the positive 4. All right, y is almost by itself. It's being multiplied by negative 2, so you're going to divide by negative 2. Okay, this is one of those cases where if you weren't sure when you looked at the fraction what exactly it is, go ahead and squeeze in that little hidden invisible. Make it visible now, 1. And if you can see it, you can see that it's just 1 half. Negative divided by negative is going to make it positive. So it's just 1 half x. So 1 half x. The other side is 4 divided by negative 2, which is negative 2, so minus 2. All right, and then the last one. To get y by itself, we want to move away all this other stuff, so I'm going to start by adding 2x to both sides. That is a negative y. We've actually had a problem like that earlier this year. I'm not sure if you remember it. So we'll have to look at what we need to do. I'm going to write the 2x first over here and then the minus 3. OK, you're not done. I almost circled it. But if the y is negative, that's not y being by itself. That's y being multiplied by, by a negative hidden invisible 1. So we're not done here. I would go ahead and make it visible so you know exactly what to do. If y is being multiplied by negative 1, you need to divide by negative 1 on both sides. Then y is going to be positive and by itself. So when you divide both sides by negative 1, 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. If you're not sure, use your calculator. Negative 2, don't forget your x. And then negative 3 divided by negative 1. Negative divided by negative is positive, so I'm going to put plus 3.